Hi guys, welcome back to Rydwick TV and welcome to a day that I've been looking forward to for a while because behind me is the brand new Range Rover Sport and today I've got the keys to take it for a drive. Now, if you're an avid viewer of the channel, you already know that we featured a Range Rover Sport on the channel before. Earlier this year, Rob managed to have a look at one in one of our showrooms to run through the exterior and interior details. If you want to see that video, please use the link in the top of the screen. However, if you want to see the first drive, stay tuned. But before we do that, I just wanted to recap and show you, if you're a new viewer, some of the highlights of the Range Rover Sport. Now, externally, it's very similar to the ones that came before. You can see a lot of different design cues in this from different Land Rover products. So it looks quite velar down the front. It looks very minimalistic. It's more clean. It's a bit, bit more futuristic in its looks. The headlights are actually the thinnest fitted to any Land Rover product ever. And then the side profile is pretty much exactly the same as Range Rover Sport before. If you see this on the road, there's no mistaking it as a Range Rover Sport. It's very imperious, especially when it's coming up behind you in your rear view mirror. Around the back is probably the most controversial part of the car. It's got a completely redesigned rear end, so the lights are slightly different, different bumper, different uh, tailgate. The whole thing is different. Now, it's probably the only controversial bit, but please let us know in the comments below what you think of the looks of the new Range Rover Sport. Now, before I jump inside, I think it's quite important for me to show you the boot space on offer. Now, of course, being a Range Rover Sport, there is plenty of space. We've got an electronically folding tailgate as standard, of course, and there's also some buttons down here, which mean you can lower the air suspension down so you can load stuff and get stuff out much easier. Now, with the rear seats in place, we've got 647 litres of boot space, and with them down, 1,491, which is pretty cavernous. Of course, being a Range Rover, passenger space is also vitally important. And well, as you'd expect, there is acres of it back here. The panoramic sunroof makes it really nice, light and airy in here, and I think this really nice, light interior helps as well. We've got air conditioning down here, dual zone, we've got heated seats, we've got chargers down there, we've got a really nice armrest in the middle here with cup holders here and a bit of storage in the middle. Now, this seat in front of me is as far back as it will go and there's still plenty of room here. Everything feels so lovely back here. I really like how the Meridian sound system is sort of built into this trim on the doors here. I think I'd be rather happy back here for a long journey. But let's be honest, the place you really want to be is in the driver's seat. Now, as you would expect, the interior of the Range Rover Sport is beautiful. Let's start directly in front of you. What do you see? Well, the steering wheel is slightly different in Sport than it is in Range Rover. This is, has got another little bit down the bottom, which actually I really like. The Range Rover just goes straight across the middle. It feels a little bit smaller, a little bit I don't know, in my opinion, a little bit nicer. Directly in front of me, we've still got the driver's display with your speed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, with the maps and so on, which actually looks like it's sort of floating in the dashboard. Really high quality. The resolution on that is great. We then move around to the middle. We've got the latest in Land Rover's Pivi Pro infotainment system, which runs Apple CarPlay, which, as you can see, looks fantastic. Again, like this floating design. Just sitting below it, you've got your air conditioning controls down here, which are conventional buttons. A lot of manufacturers are getting rid of those and putting them on the screen. I'm kind of glad with this, they're still here and still physical buttons. Then you've got your terrain response here, which we'll mention a little bit later when we go for a drive. You've got cup holders everywhere. There's a big storage area here, which you could probably lose a child in. It's absolutely huge. You've then got cup holders in the middle here with another area down here, which you could lose your other child in, maybe the mother-in-law, that can all lose in there. You've got really nice armrests here. And in general, the quality, the fit and finish, the feel of everything in here is really beautiful. The seating position, of course, Range Rover always has amazing seating position and the Sport is no exception. The seats themselves feel incredibly supportive within this particular car. This is an autobiography, so this is top, top spec. We've got heated seats, we've got ventilated seats, we've got massage seats, which actually are really lovely. And on a day like this, massage seats and heated seats are a win-win. The Alcantara headlining is beautiful. 
panoramic sunroof I already mentioned, really lovely. Oh, it's such a beautiful place to sit. And well, I think it's about time we don't waste any more time and take this car out for a drive. So welcome then to the driver's seat of the new Range Rover Sport. Now, as I've already mentioned, I've been really looking forward to this. And now I've done about 100 miles in this so far just to get a flavor of what it's like. And let's start with the, the technical bits, the bits that are just fact. Range Rover and Range Rover Sport have always had quite a close relationship with one another, never more so than this new generation. It shares the vast majority of its underpinnings with the big Range Rover. Big Range Rover? It, it's just a Range Rover. I, I don't know how else you're supposed to say that, but the big Range Rover, the, the, the Range Rover Range Rover. So we have the same air suspension, albeit with a few minor tweaks to make it feel a little bit more sporty, a little bit more dynamic on the road. And we've also got the rear wheel steer from the Range Rover. So we've got 7.3 degrees of steering angle on the rear, which means that this large car is very, very easy to maneuver around town. Now the Range Rover Sport has pretty much exactly the same powertrains available as the Range Rover as well. So it starts with a D300, a D350, we've got the petrols and we've got the V8 plus the hybrids. Now this particular car is a D3 50, which I'll get onto in a minute. But a big groundbreaking thing with Range Rover Sport is the fact that the hybrids have an incredible range. It's claimed to get around 70 miles on hybrid electric power alone, which is actually really impressive considering that it's just a hybrid rather than just a fully electric car. You can do so much of your journey just on electric power and for company car owners, Hybrid is perfect because the benefit in kind is nice and low. But what's it actually like to drive this thing, and especially this D350? Well, we've got around 400 horsepower, so if you really want to, it's got plenty of poke in it. And for me, I'm just gonna say it, this is one of the favorite cars that I've driven this year. I think it feels absolutely fantastic. It's exactly as you'd expect a Range Rover Sport to be. The windscreen has got a slightly steeper rake, it feels slightly lower, you feel like you're sort of a little bit more in the cabin, whereas in the Range Rover you're sort of on it, you're really high up, you're still high up in this car, don't get me wrong. However, it doesn't feel as high as big Range Rover. You feel like you're more part of the machine in this car, you feel like you're sitting in it rather than on it while sitting in it. These seats are absolutely fantastic. It's like having an armchair in here. They are absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> You've got a great view out. We've got the camera in the rear view mirror as well, which gives you a really great view. If you've never seen that before, it is really, really good. And on a long cruise, it is silky smooth. It's incredibly comfortable. The air suspension does a wonderful job at ironing out some of the terrible, terrible roads we have here in this country. It just feels, I mean, it doesn't really feel too dissimilar to the Range Rover. It feels just as comfortable. Yeah, it's, if, if you're going over really, really rough ground, you can kind of feel a slight difference in the suspension. It's been tuned different. It feels a tiny little bit harder, maybe a tiny little bit uh, rougher on the road, but it's still, exceptionally comfortable and still so quiet in here. We've got the same noise cancellation system in, in the headrests that we do in Range Rover and it's, it's unbelievable how quiet it is in here. It's one of the most quiet places I've ever sat, let alone in a car. Over a long distance journey, this would just soothe you. It's amazing, it's such a great long distance mile muncher. Just some of the roads over here are just motorways, which is, to be honest, where these cars will spend a lot of time, just doing big mileage, doing commuting, doing all sorts. It feels absolutely wonderful as an everyday car. I mean, it's, it's so smooth. And these roads are very broken up here. I don't know whether you can tell on the camera, I'm not bouncing all over the place, I'm not jerking all over the place. It feels great. The steering, especially at low speed, feels really good as well. It's very easy to place the car, even going through small gaps. You don't go through them like, 
uh, like that because you've just got confidence in where you're placing the car. You always know where the front end is. Now, because this is a Land Rover, it also needs to work off-road. And of course it does. We've got the latest in terrain response down here. You've got all the modes you're gonna need, gravel, snow and ice, mud ruts, all that stuff, low range gearbox, and so on and so on. But let's be honest, here is where it's gonna spend most of its time, on road. To me, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Range Rover Sport. It's the one that I would go for. And this has not disappointed. This is still the one that I personally would go for. And if I'm being completely honest, this is probably the SUV I would go for. If ever I won the lottery, I think I'd have one of these alongside maybe a Porsche GT product or a 720 or maybe a Lambo, who knows. But the same constant would be the Range Rover Sport. This to me is pretty much the king. It's, it's impressed. It's exactly what I expected. No, I think it's exceeded expectations. I knew that it was going to be good, but what I didn't think was that I would enjoy driving it this much. It is a pleasure to drive, and it's, it's gonna make everyday mundane journeys just feel so luxurious and so easy. It is a great place to sit with the updated systems in here, the Pivi Pro and so on, as I've already mentioned, the Apple CarPlay, the way everything feels in here, really, really high quality. It feels just like, like Land Rover, Range Rover have taken this car to a new level. It doesn't feel like the Range Rover's poor cousin or sibling. It feels just as high quality, feels just as luxurious. But in my personal opinion, I think this looks a little bit better. I like the lines on this. I like the way it looks. I think it's more sporty. It kind of fits me a little bit better. You may be different, but I think all in all, this new Range Rover Sport is a brilliant, brilliant product. So what are my final thoughts on the brand new Range Rover Sport? Well, it does absolutely everything. It's exceptional quality, I think it looks great, and it drives absolutely beautifully. So I think it is a worthy successor to the previous one. If you want any more information on new Range Rover Sport or any Land Rover for that matter, please use the links in the description of this video to contact your nearest Rybrook Land Rover retailer. And well, I'll see you guys again next time. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm gonna get out of this horrible, horrible October weather. I'll see you again soon.